Ooh, 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 look what we just got. 200 watt new panels. And now for some research to make sure they have the same components. Now all you need is two two by four by 10 feet and one one by four by eight feet or one by six by eight feet. Both sizes will work. And then you need about two handfuls of two inch to three inch screws. Okay, let's get started, shall we? You will need to cut two pieces at 47 inches. And now two pieces at 53 inches. And now that you've got all your pieces cut, put them together so the 53 inch boards are on the inside of the 47 inch pieces. Now you should end up with a spacing of 53 inches on the top and the bottom of the frame we're building. And it should measure 40 inches for each side for the height. This is why you need to cut the side boards at 47, although the height of the panels are 40 inches. They need to be longer so the top and bottom boards can connect to the side boards, like shown in the picture here. And now the fun part of putting it all together. Sink two screws at each corner so you end up with a nice frame. Now it's time to cut our 1x4 or our 1x6x8 feet into 8 pieces at 16 inches long for the cross braces and panel supports. The last mark should end up on the 8 foot mark. Now your cuts don't need to be squared up, but it does make it easier and faster to make the board this way. And Dennis only likes to do things once because he's Mr. Perfectionist if you guys haven't figured that out already. Now place the cross pieces like this so that they will strengthen the corners and also be able to hold the panels on the opposite side. The middles are just there to support the panel. You do want to make sure you use your square to make sure your panels will fit properly. You don't want to have to do this part over again. When Dennis is building, he always tries to put the screws in a triangle pattern for strength and less movement. Once you have everything in place and square, you can trim the cross boards along the frame edges. Now when you turn this frame over, you might have some screws peeking out the other side like Dennis had. Not to worry, he just uses his grinder with a 4 inch diamond blade to cut those out. Now don't forget to pick up these screw tips. Don't want those in your car tires. So once you're done building the frame, it should look a lot like this. You can see here now that the panels have the corner and middle supports for them to sit against. Now it's time for Dennis to go up the ladder and reap the rewards of his labor. And of course there's snow. Gotta clear that first. It's nice to have things organized it doesn't happen often with the kids around, but when it does, it's always nice. And hey, there I am, making sure the old man's not falling off the roof. Making a pathway up top of the roof with the snow makes it easier for Dennis not to fall. So just clear out what you need to install the panels. Snow acts like an insulator, so it's best to keep that on the roof as much as possible. After the frame is loosely in place, Dennis anchored it all onto the roof at the same angle as the other set. After the frame is connected to the other one, you can put the panels in. The panels should fit into the frame side by side with about a quarter inch to half inch clearance around the frame. Leaving the space around the frame lets the air pass through on windy days. Dennis just anchors the panels in with screws instead of clips, two on each side. Well, that's enough for me. Now Dennis is going to come on and he's going to explain to you guys the wire mumbo jumbo that I don't understand. Here he is. So, all of my panels are the same. They're all 100 watt panels. I got two there. I got two there. I got space over here on this side for two more. The way I put them together just easier for grommet wise and this and that is I put two of them at a time together right and then I I have another 
wire that goes from there that connects these two together. And then I got another, these guys in a pair. And then both pairs are put together to the main one that goes down to the shed where the rest of the system is. Right, so these are my leads. And that's the way I do it. Uh, but for someone that's off grid and you're not worried about pretty and just strong, I mean, this is nice and strong. There's no way this is going anywhere. You can have 100 mile wind and it'll be fine, you know, because it's all anchored to the roof and down below and everything. So hopefully you guys can hear this over the, the Jenny, but so yeah, I got all four of them right now. Just finished connecting everything together. So they should be pumping electricity in there right now. So this is what we're bringing in now with those four panels on a cloudy day. So it's well worth the money to get the extra two. $432. Yeah, for two two panels. Yeah. But that's Canadian. So yeah, it's gotta go over the border and everything else. So it's a little bit more expensive for us, but still worth it.